Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wiles here. You're dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having an awesome day. Hope you got your day off to a great start. If not, you can press that reset button right now and start over. You are always in control of your state. You may not be in control of every situation, every circumstance, every condition that uh, becomes a part of your temporary reality, but you can always be in control of your state, how you view it, how you see it, how you plan to move through it. And it's going to be a massive impact. It's going to play a massive role in how well you fare in life, period. If you have a proclivity to see everything in a negative light, then it's going to wear on you. You're going to start to produce negative realities through your thinking and through your expectations. Remember, I teach consistently that God will only meet you at the level of your expectations. Uh, your faith will dictate your expectations and you have to train your, th your faith to believe beyond the moment. And if you don't, you're gonna always repeat the moment because your moment is going to train you that this is who you are, this is where you're at. That's why I tell people, Never say I'm broke. Never say I'm beaten. Admit you have a challenge, but that the challenge is overcoming. To be broke is without re resources. And you are your greatest resource. Your resourcefulness is the greatest resource of all. And so you're never broke. You're just in a situation that needs solving. And you solve the problem and you keep moving. You grow, you build, but you have to start with understanding when it's time to press the reset button. So, uh, that's that. Uh, quick, quick reminder before we get into this, because we're getting started a little late. A quick, quick reminder: uh, if you haven't gotten Critical Mass, you haven't ordered. Uh, I am. Do that. The links are going to be uh, in the post box, description box, depending on where this video shows up on what platform, because it's going to be on a number of different platforms. Uh, also, we're still doing rapid change breakthrough sessions. We're also doing also doing business sessions, but. Right now, the rapid change uh, form is in the description box. Read it, fill it out, email it in, and uh, get uh, <clears throat> scheduled for your one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session with yours truly. Uh, I enjoy those. I had one earlier today. Uh, it turned out great. Uh, looking forward to moving forward with that individual, but I'm telling you that when you consider the fact that it's not going to cost you anything and you can literally sit down and nail down one thing that you can change in your life that will have a massive impact moving forward it's worth it so do that okay let's move forward this is relationship wednesday and so we're talking about relationships relationships come in all shapes sizes forms uh and meaning you know, we're not just talking about marriage. We're not just talking about romance. We're not just talking about parenting. We're not just talking about best friends and confidants. We're talking about building a circle. Uh, every person in your circle will have some relationship with you, whether it's business, whether it's personal, uh, whether it's uh, a part of your health dynamic, whatever it is, it's fitness related, whatever it is, it's a relationship, right? And so you need to make sure that you're building rela relationships. And one of the places that I've seen that relationships have massive impact is in the way of conversation. I judge my relationships by the conversations I have with people, but conversations are simply expressions of beliefs, ideas, and feelings. So how are you feeling? What are your, what are your beliefs? What are your ideas? What are your concepts? What's on your mind? I, I, I don't allow myself to be in constant uh, engagement engagement with people whose conversation is always complaining, always finger pointing, always whining, always talking about, in other words, the victim. Uh, I don't have victims in my circle. I will encounter victims and I will challenge them to abandon the victim mindset. And if they abandon the victim mindset, the sky's the limit and beyond. But if not, I'm going to tell them, we can't work together. I will not work. I will not work with a victim beyond the initial agement if they're not willing to abandon the victim mindset because that negativity had, comes at a cost. It takes energy, it takes force, it takes effort to, to, to lift that type of negativity. It takes energy, effort, and force to sustain your position while engaging 
that kind of force. Now, there are times when you have to dig, you have to dive into negativity to perform who you are, to execute who you are, to be who you are, to lift people, to encourage people, to empower people. But that's not, those aren't people that are in your circle. Those are people that you are impacting. Those are people that you are uh, exerting your positive force on. You are not engaging on a regular basis in building relationships with them, not in that way. So you, you have to sit up and you have to look at what are the conversations of champions? What are you talking about? Do you not talk about your challenges? No, you talk about your challenges. I have friends, I have colleagues, and we talk about our challenges. But the manner in which we talk about our challenges, it's what's different. It's what sets us apart. When we talk about our challenges, we're talking about the solutions and how we're going to conquer them. We talk about how we're going to overcome them. We expect to win when we have conversations. It's never an expectation of losing. It's never an expectation of falling victim. It's always, hey, man. And this is what I want to do about it. Well, what's going on with this? Well, man, this, this, I had this, I had this. I, I experienced this setback. So this is what I'm doing about it. And what if that doesn't work? How are you going to approach it then? Well, then if that doesn't work, then I'm going to move over here and I'm going to try this. I'm going to keep going until I get it. And, you know, one of the things that I talk about a lot that I got from, you know, uh, uh, honestly, a YouTube personality uh, that I came across that I absolutely love, a guy by the name of Evan Carmichael. Uh, uh, if you look at him on the surface, non-imposing, uh, not very forceful in his vocal presentation, uh, not very imposing in the physical sense, but he's systematically persistent in the way he does things. And he's established a very well uh, presented uh, demonstration and system on, on, on YouTube, and he's become very successful. He's definitely building a platform that's uh, not only going to uh, offer him wealth, but a voice. And that's extremely important. And one thing that uh, Evan has talked about is your one word. Matter of fact, he wrote a book called Your One Word. And the one word thing is, if you had to describe how you've been successful in life using one word as your attribute, what would it be? I've heard people, one word is faith, one word is love, one word is trust, and all of these things determine, determined uh, and, 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 and so many others, enduring. What's your one word? And, and I really started, to, when I first heard that, I'm like, okay, if I had to break me down, what would be my one word? And my one word was, was easy. If I look back over my life and I look at the times that I've triumphed, well, triumph also is associated with struggle because the, if you're not struggling, if you're not pushing against something, if you're not fighting against something, then there is nothing to triumph against. So I looked at the times in my life when I was up against the wall, when I had my greatest challenges, when there were times when people were literally expecting me to fold, when people were expecting me to meet my demise. How did I come? How did I overcome that? And you know, some would love to say it was uh, my knowledge, it was my expertise, it was my wealth of experience, it was my academic accomplishments, it was all these things. When the truth of the matter was, it was relentless. I was relentless. I had no off switch. My, my mantra was no surrender, no retreat. Uh, I, I have a saying that's pretty common, uh, but I've definitely adopted in the way that I live. And it's simply that when I make up in my mind that I want something, I'm going to get it or I'm going to try. Those are the options. There are no other options. I, I, I learned a long time ago, the more options that you have, the less likely you're going to reach the, the, the height of your potential. Why? Because you're going to choose the most comfortable option. My options are to get it or to die trying. Those are the only options. I'm relentless. And so when when I'm talking and I'm, I'm, I'm portraying that. So there's a part of me in the conversation of champions. When I'm talking with other people who are winners, when I'm talking to other people who are coming, and let me, let me define something for you. Winning is not a position, it's a state of mind. See, a lot of people will look at where you are now and declare you a loser. A lot of people will uh, observe your condition and declare you a loser. A lot of people will look at 
what you're going through and try to define you. Never allow someone else, first of all, to define you and never allow yourself to be defined by a temporary condition that you have the power to overcome. You must make up in your mind that I'm not going to be broken by this. I will not be destroyed by this. I will overcome. My one word was relentless. No matter where I was, I wasn't going to quit. I don't care. There were some times I was flat on my back, but I wasn't going to quit. It's either going to kill me or I'm getting up from here. Every day I wake up and not every morning I wake up or is everything in alignment with what I believe for myself, but I don't fold to the condition. I don't fold to the circumstances. I have made up in my mind that as long as I'm breathing, I'm in the fight and I won't quit. I'm relentless. See, there were some times when my degrees couldn't work for me. There were some times when the, the amount of money in the bank account didn't align with what I needed to be done. There were some times when the connections I thought I had couldn't come through for me. There were some times when, 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 when what I was hoping for couldn't express itself in the moment. But I was relentless. That's something that life couldn't take away from me. See, there are going to be some times your money's funny. There are going to be some times your friend are acting, friends are acting funny. There are going to be some times that you feel alone and lost and there's nothing there, but there's a, that relentless mindset. Not everybody is going to have a relentless mindset, but you got to have something that you can anchor yourself. I love faith. Faith is a good one word. Faith says that I believe the impossible. I believe that what other people feel can't be done, I can do. Faith says that I can see beyond my current reality to something exceptional and extraordinary, and I'm trusting my design and the designer that I am going to fulfill my purpose, and I'm going to walk in it, and that's power in the conversation with self. See, self-talk is powerful. It was once said that the brain is the most powerful supercomputer on the planet and that your self-talk is the program that you will run on it. What are you saying about yourself? What is in the discussions you're having about your life? When you're having talks with your friends, are they helping you complain? Are they helping you point the blame, point the finger of blame? Are they helping you come up with excuses? Or is the conversation the talk of champions? Is it about winning? Is it about overcoming? Is it about rising to meet the challenge? Because there are going to be challenges. You've got to have people in your circle that say, we got it. You got it. You're going to handle it. You've got to be able to have an expectation that rises above the moment. You heard me say this before. You've got to speak power, execution, and exceptional achievement into your existence. You've got to speak it. And for those who are Christian believers, the Bible says, and those who are not, I'm going to connect it because it's connected and it's not exclusive. But the Bible says that you can call things that are not as though they were and that you manifest that when you call it. And, and, and it's reaffirmed uh, in, in a verse in, in Job, I believe the 22nd chapter says, you shall declare a thing and it will be established for you. You shall declare a thing and it shall be established for you. You shall declare a thing. You, you declare with your verbal presentation, your verbal utterances. What are you speaking? Your self-talk, your conversation with your friends. What are you declaring about your life? What are you declaring? The problem is this is not a one-sided uh, a, 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 a truth. It doesn't say you should declare a good thing and it shall be established. It says you shall declare a thing. The problem is a bunch of you are declaring being broke. Some of you are declaring being lonely. Some of you are declaring defeat. Some of you are declaring heartache and depression and so many other things that it has become a, a, a reality. It has been inculcated so deeply into your subconscious and your psyche that it has manifested itself and you don't know how to deal with it. You've declared the wrong thing. You've got to be around people who will speak power. 
You got to be around people who will uplift you. You got to control your own elements and component components of the conversation. What conversations are you having about yourself? How are you speaking when it comes to who you are and what you will do? Are you speaking your condition? Are you speaking your destiny? Are you speaking where you're at now and what you're going through? Or are you speaking what you were built for? See, some of us get caught up in the condition and we allow the condition to define us. We allow the circumstances to define us. And people have asked me, who have watched me go through some of the most darkest times in my life, they ask me, how are you sitting here smiling when you're going through, see, you don't understand, see, I've spoken my, my destiny so much into my spirit that when I get to a dark moment and I'm looking at negative circumstances, there's something in my spirit that just disagrees with my circumstances. Some people are saying I'm in denial. No, I'm living beyond the moment because my expectations for my life aren't dictated by a situation. They aren't dictated by a condition. They are dictated by circumstances. They are dictated by my expectations and by what I demand of myself. I'm big enough to come out of it because God built me that way. And that's what you got to be able to say. But you gotta have some friends around you who are champions. You gotta have some friends around you who are champion-minded, who are winners, who have in themselves the, 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 the ability to speak power. You say, call things that are not as though they were. That's not mystic, that's not magic. That's the power of the universe in work. That's how it was designed to work. When you speak it, it's a part of the program. You speak it enough, you're reprogramming. So if you got some negative things in your mind, you speak it enough, you see it enough, you, 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 you entertain it enough, you're reprogramming the mind to see it differently. And when you talk, that's the program. Your self-talk about yourself is the program you're running. Your subconscious controls 96% of your overall behavior. So 96% of your day is being controlled by what's been programmed in the subconscious. You got to be careful of what you're saying. You got to be careful of who's in your circle saying things and what they're saying. You have to have an ability to speak beyond the moment. You have to have an ability to speak ahead of and above the condition. Never let the condition define you. You're defined by your destiny. You're defined by your design. You're defined by your purpose, not by your moment. Your moment is just that. It's passing unless you claim it. Most people are where they're at because they identified with their suffering. I say, this, oh, I say this all the time, that pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. See, suffering starts the moment you identify with what's causing you pain. When you connect with it and you see it as a part of you now, you are locked in and tied to suffering. It's not just pain anymore. It's the unshakable idea that I can't get away from the pain that I can't overcome the pain, that I'm not big enough. No, 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 no. Pain is inevitable. It's a part of the training process. Pain is a part of the development process. Pain is a part of the strengthening process. It's a part of the growth process. But when you identify with what caused the pain, it becomes suffering. You become locked into it. No, suffering is a choice because you have a choice to sit up and say, I'm going through something, but I'm coming out on the other side. The best lesson my grandfather uh, ever taught me, he said, son, I've done the best I can to raise you. I've done the best I can to give you what you need to navigate this world. But what I'm about to give you now, if you get it, he said, you won't have to chase greatness. It'll overtake you. He said, you're only going to be in three places in your life going in a storm, in a storm, or coming out of one. That's your life. Get used to it. You're going to be going into one, in one, or coming out of one. Said, your first inclination, son, 
when you find yourself in a storm is to look for the person you can blame for being there. He said, don't waste your time. 90% of the time it's you. He said, but don't worry about that. He said, your number one responsibility as a man is when you find yourself in a storm to make sure you come out a better man than when you went in. If you do that, you won't have to chase greatness. It'll overtake you. The storm was meant to build you. The storm was meant to grow you. The storm was meant to expand you. The storm was meant to empower you. When you learn the purpose of the storm, it won't shake the ground when you get when you enter into it. When you make up in your mind that I'm going to exit the storm a better man than when I went in, greatness is inevitable. And I'm like, okay. So I started to see the storm different. I started to say, okay, pain is inevitable. The storm is coming. But my job is to allow the storm to shape me, not break me, not cause me to become compliant and complacent, not cause me to surrender and give up, but to develop character in me, to build integrity in me, to build belief and faith and confidence, all the things that I'm gonna need to take on the next big challenge. The storm is equipped to provide. But I can't identify with the storm because then I'll get stuck in it. And I'll keep reliving it until I shake it. A lot of you are declaring the wrong thing in your life. A lot of you are declaring what you're going through instead of declaring what you're built for. I, I could go on with that, but you need to surround yourself with some people that talk like champions. People who aren't afraid to call things that are not as though they were. People who are willing to declare some things that they can't readily see. You, you got to be around some people who manifest. That's what this, this is all about. This is about saying, I'm not there yet, but I'm manifesting it in my mind first. I'm speaking and I'm believing and I'm trusting in it. I'm moving towards it. And the universe has no option but to pay me what I demand. That's faith. I mean, God's design is unbelievable. And when you look at it in its purest nature, it's simple. You are going to be rewarded based on what you believe. Because your beliefs are going to control your actions. Your beliefs are going to control your expectations. Your beliefs are going to control how you engage and uh, deal with things. Based on what you believe, you will engage. If you believe what you're going through is going to destroy you, it will. If you believe that you're strong enough and have what it takes to overcome it, you will. And in the process of overcoming it, you will develop into something a little better. And every time you get an opportunity to grow, you'll become a little better. That's the power of this thing. You are becoming. The question is, what are you becoming? What are you declaring? It's that simple. What does your self-talk reveal to you? When you stop and you look at yourself, what are you saying about yourself? Be careful. With that being said, I'm going to get out of here. Look, there is an awesome opportunity for you in your life. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how people perceive you. I don't care what anyone says about you. I'm telling you personally that there's something powerful on the other side of your commitment to excellence, on the other side of your commitment to being the best you can be, to being powerfully impactful in the lives of other people. There's some greatness waiting on you. It's time for you to start living in your destiny and stop acquiescing to your condition. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget to get Critical Mass. It's the first in a six, six book series. It's my 20th book. But, and, and that alone is a testimony to what happens when you're relentless. Because I was told after the first book that I couldn't get published. Not because it wasn't well written. They told me it was well written, but they said it wasn't an audience and there was no way to market it. 
here I am 21 books later. Critical Mass is the 20th book, the first book in a six book series on personal development, personal growth, personal empowerment. And if you haven't gotten it, you need to order it. The link is in there. Uh, the second book in that series, the 21st book, I Am, which talks about self-talk and declaration, what we just talked about. That's coming. You can pre-order that as well. You can also sign up for a one-on-one -on -one with me on me. That information is also in there. Take control of your situation. Stop allowing things to just happen and fearing and worrying and being anxious and creating negative situations. Take control, take charge. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that when it's time for me to go, I will die on E. I'm challenging you to do the same thing. I'm out.